So we're now in a position to change the multiplier so that we can now deal with normal numbers times subnormal numbers giving normal results. So if you go to the resources section you'll see a file there so you go ahead and open up that file. Um, it's called fpm underscore triple n underscore nsn. Now whenever you open it up if you head to the top layer so that the top level is here this multiplier nnn underscore test and that'll take you to this level here so there's no change in this level from the, the previous diagrams we have our inputs and we have our outputs and we have them in hex so we can see the correct values so if you head down into the multiplier now i've already made the changes to this and what i'll do is i'll talk you through all of the changes that i've made in order to allow us to implement the subnormal multiplication so as you see the the diagram is ostensibly the same it just looks very similar there's just a few changes that i've made in order to get it to work now we said before that what we want to do in order to allow us to multiply the subnormal numbers is to normalize the subnormal input and also extend the exponent to a nine value exponent as opposed to an eight value exponent and thirdly we wanted to change the the value for the unbiased exponent that's our e small e x small e y whichever one is subnormal to minus one two six minus the leading zero count so that's what i've done in this implementation here so first thing we have to do here is we want to know whether we've actually got a normal number or a subnormal number and i've done it in this little section so that's an extra added section here so if you head down in here and you see it's quite straightforward here we've got an or gate here and all we're doing is oring together the inputs all the uh, exponent values so as you see here i've already extended the exponent to nine bits it was originally just these eight bits here but now we've got an extra nine bit but all we need to do is or together the these eight bits here now if we get a value of one it means that we're going to have a normal number because at least one of these exponents is going to be a non-zero so we've got a normal number if the exponent is if they're all zeros then we're going to get a zero at the output here so this just tests and it says that if we get an one in the output for from a cell this the number is normal and if we get a zero the number is subnormal and we've done that for the x and the y so that's quite straightforward so let's head back up now you can see it as well that i've got rid of a lot of the wires that we're running here so instead of having the wire from ex here to ex i've just used these tunnels and the same for the my over here and the ey's and the ex and the sx this as well okay so it just tidies up a little bit and makes it a bit neater so what we wanted to do is first of all we wanted to extend the exponent so if you head into this cell here you can see here that i've taken the exponent and i've added on this bit extender so if you click on that so that's a bit extender and it goes from the input 8 to the input 9 so it just adds an extra bit on in the most significant place so this was the original exponent and now we've got another exponent with an extra bit added so let's head back up now a thing to note as well is that all of the values here for the pins for the uh, tunnels they're all uh, nine bits as well so all the way down this tree here everything's been changed to nine bits as opposed to eight bits now we said that after we've extended the exponent we want to change the value for the unbiased exponent and the unbiased exponent has to be for a subnormal number it has to be a value minus one two six minus the leading zero count so let's go in here and we'll see how we've implemented that in here so you can see this is slightly different in the previous uh, 
version, we only had this section here. But I've added another little section here because this output isn't just going to be the value of our biased exponent minus a 127. So it will be that if the value, if the x value is a normal value. So you can see here I've had to take in that test in here as well. So this test to find out, this is the test to find out whether the numbers are normal or not. So in this instance here, I've got a value of 1, which means that the number that I was using in the, the previous uh, example was as a normal number. And you can see here that this is going to choose two different outputs. So it's either going to choose the normal output, which is this one here, which is just our EX minus a bias. Or if this was to go low, so I'll just actually run through the simulation here. So if this was to go low, then instead of passing on this value here to the output, it would pass the value on from here to the output. So the value from here to the output is going to be our minus 126 minus a pre-leading zero count. So the way that I generated this here was that I just generated the value of 126. So this is 126 here, that's 07e and hex is 126. So I took that and I actually just added on the pre-leading zero count. So I've kept everything positive. Now I'll talk through where I got the pre-leading zero count just in a minute. But the pre-leading zero count, it's going to be um, a number between 0 and 24. So we needed the 5 bits in order to represent that. So we've got 5 bits here, which tells us the leading zero count. We have to extend that up to 9 bits because, as I said, all of the stuff all the way through the exponent tree here now is going to be 9 bits. So we take that leading zero count, we add it on to the 126. And now we've got the positive value. In order to make it negative, we put a subtractor in and we subtract it from zero. This was just a, an easy, a quick way of doing it. So what we'll get out here is the minus 126 minus the pre-leading zero count. And we're going to make a choice between either of these, depending on whether the input here for x is going to be a normal number or a subnormal number. Now we do exactly the same thing if you head up. We do exactly the same thing with the y section. So it's exactly the same circuit. It's just that we're going to use the preleading zero counter for y and we're going to use the test for to find out whether the uh, y input is a subnormal or not. So now that we've made the correct choice of whether the unbiased exponent is just going to be the value of the EX minus 127 or whether it's going to be the subnormal version which is minus 126 minus the leading zero count. We get into the summer, so this is just the same as was previously, there's no changes. And we get into this summer as well. Now this is slightly different from this one because at this point here, once we've done the summation, we're going to have to take off the ninth bit because the final output for the exponent is still only an 8-bit exponent and we can take off safely the most significant bit and it's going to leave us the 8 bits that we require for our exponent. So that's us talk through this exponent tree here. And we can finally we go through the mux, and again we do the the, the um, test here to find out whether we uh, we add on an extra bit due to normalisation, or whether an extra bit gets added on due to rounding. So let's go and we'll talk our way through the mantisa section here. So now we're going to look at how we did the pre-leading zero count. So let's head in. To one of these. So this one and this one have been changed, but again they're just copies of each other. Okay, so the only difference is just the actual input value. So if we head in here, now again this circuit is a little bit different because previously with this circuit we had a 23 bit input, and what we wanted to do with that is we wanted to make it a 24 bit input. So this was the bit extension. 
And when we were dealing with just normal numbers, we would only extend this by a value of 1. So it would mean that at the final output here in this instance here, if the value of our number is a normal number, we'd simply take this number here, and you'll see the path here, it'll go through this path here, it will come down, it will go through the mux, and it will head out here. And all we'll be doing is we, we would be appending this with a value of 1 at the front. That's if it is a normal number. Now let's see what's going to happen if this isn't a normal number. If we now were to put this at a value of 0, so we'll work through this simulation here. So now it's a value of 0. We know that the number coming in, uh, coming in is actually a subnormal number. So in this instance here, we're going to bit extend it again, but we're going to bit extend it with the value of 0. So the 0 coming in here will add the 0 onto the front of this here. So at this point here, we're just going to have this number here, but we'll have a 24th bit, which will be a 0. Now, what we want to do is we want to pre-normalize this. That is, we want to take, find out how many leading zeros we have because we need to work out a leading zero count in order to use that for our exponent field. But we also want to shift, that is, normalize that subnormal number. And we want to take the leading one and we want to make shift it all the way up to uh, the top of the 24 bits. So this is how we're going to do that here. We're going to take this here, which has got the zero in it, and we're going to find the highest value of 1. So what it's going to do is it's going to count along this way all the, all the bits up to this point here. So in this case here, there's 24, so that's going to get to uh, 23, 20, it'll get to 21. So it'll count up to the value 21, because that's the place for the highest, uh, for the uh, highest of 1. But then we don't, don't want that place, we want actually the number of zeros afterwards. So to get the number of zeros afterwards, what we can do is we can take the number 24 and we can take away this count. And we've got the number 24 here, which is in uh, hex. And we can take away the highest one count. And at this point here, this is going to tell us the number of leading zeros. So you can see here in this instance, the number of leading zeros is going to be 1 plus 2, which is 3. In this instance here, it will be 3 because we'll have 1 here, 1 here, and we'll have the leading 0, which has been added in at this point here. So that gives us our leading 0 count for our x that we can use for the exponent value. Now, what we also want to do is we want to normalize this number. That is, we want to take this 1 here, and we want to shift it along 3 places. So we want to shift everything along 3 places. So what we can do is we can take that number 3 and we can put it through a left shift. So if I click on this here, and you'll see it's called a left logical left shift. And again, it's a 24 bits that's coming in. And it's going to shift left by this number here, which is the value of 3. So at this point here, we're going to have the output here, which is the this number here with the leading zero, and then everything shifted by three. And this is the value here you can see at the output. So you can see here this point here, it's now gone up one, two, three places. It's gone up one, two, three places to the top. So this here is our pre-normalization of our subnormal number, just like we have seen whenever we did it in the Excel uh, VBA tool. And again, we can make a choice between each of these by determining whether the input for our, uh, our number is going to be a normal number or a subnormal number. So let's head back up. There's quite a lot in that. So what you could do is you could open up, go through to this level, and have a little play with it and test it out for yourself. Now, we can head up again to the top level and you can see here that we have the same circuit for the Y and it's just exactly the same but it's just the Y input as opposed to the X inputs and the leading zero counter for Y.
So that was the hardest part of the uh, process. Now, there's no changes throughout here. We've still got our most significant bit and our least significant bit, and we're multiplying them together. I see there's no any changes within this level. So everything else has remained exactly the same. So it's quite reasonable to ask then, if we were to pre-increment one of the numbers, that is a subnormal number, is that going to affect the rounding? And how would you have to change the rounding to take account of this shifting of one of the numbers? Well, we're not going to talk through that in this video. We're going to wait until we've done the last two types of multiplication. And once we've covered those multiplications and we've got them working, we'll go back and we'll have a look at and see in its entirety how introducing the subnormal numbers with this pre-normalization will affect our rounding. So let's go and we'll have a little play with this and we'll try it out and we'll make sure it is actually working. So if you go ahead and open up the conversion tool, so we're going to click on floating point multiplier. Now we're going to multiply together 1e to the minus 40 and the number 10,000. So you can see here we're going to have a normal number for our x and we're going to have a subnormal number for our y. And we've got our answer out here as well. And we need to compare this with the multiplier we've got and see that we actually get the same result. So if you like, you can take a note of these numbers. So we'll close this down and we'll go and load these numbers up and see whether we actually get the correct values. And again, you can see the numbers we expect here for the exponent tree as well. So let's go ahead and we'll open up the file here. Okay, so you can see that I'm in the top level here. Now I've already gone in and I've added in the values that we require. Okay, so I've just went into the simulation and I've added the values in for our x and the values in for our y. So you can see here our x is the 10,000 and the y here was 1e to the minus 40. And whenever you multiply out, I get this answer here. And this answer here is the same as the answer we got on the Excel VBA program. So you can see it does actually work. What you can do as well is you could drop down inside and you could add a few probes. And you can see I've got a few probes already stuck in here. But you can add a few more probes and you can check and see the values throughout the exponent tree and also throughout the multiplication and you can compare those to what you expect to see or what you have seen within the excel spreadsheet another thing to do potentially and i will do this in a, a later course a later um, video but it's just something that you could maybe like to try for yourself first of all as a suggestion and that is if you go up to the top level here we could replace these X and Y inputs with other input types. So, for example, we could come down here and we could head into the memory section and we could replace these with uh, RAM. Okay, so you could put a RAM cell here and a RAM cell here. And then what you could do, you could edit contents and you could either edit contents directly here or you could open or create a file with a set of numbers that we want to multiply together and we can test it with that set of numbers. So we'll go ahead probably you know, at the end of the multiplier section and we'll create a, a little test script to test the, the multiplier and see that it all works the way we expect it to work. So that's all there is for this video. 
in the next couple of videos, we'll go ahead and we'll finish off the multiplier with the last two types of multiplication. So thank you for listening. I'll get you in the next video. Goodbye.